Diplidium caninum, the dog and cat flea tapeworm, by Ricardo Flores. Everyone loves pets, especially dogs and cats. In the U.S. alone, there is an estimated 78.2 million dogs owned. 39% of U.S. households own at least one dog, while 28% of owners own two dogs. There is an estimated 86.4 million cats owned. 33% of households own at least one cat, while 52% of owners own two cats. Most pet owners want healthy pets, yet they do not know about a parasitic flatworm that can affect both cats and dogs. This parasite is known as the Plidium caninum. The dog is the principal definitive host for the Plidium caninum. Other potential hosts include cats and foxes. Although the tapeworm is usually transferred via a flea, the chewing louse of dogs can also be the intermediate host for a tapeworm. Humans can also get infected by ingesting the contaminated flea. Usually, only infants and young children be can become infected because they are more likely to ingest a contaminated flea. The Plidium caninum is known to be a worldwide parasite that requires an intermediate host to develop. Therefore, its range is dependent upon the availability of a, both flea and vertebrae hosts, as well as the ability to survive outside of the host until ingested by a flea. Tapeworms belong to the class Cestoda. The most common parasitic cestode in domestic animals and humans are the Cyclopholidium. Tapeworms can be identified by the morphology of the scolex or head, the neck, and individual segments called proglottids. The entire body of the Diplidium caninum tapeworm is called strobila. The scolex or head of the Diplidium tapeworm is conical shaped, has four suckers, and is extremely small. The scolex has a retractable restellum which has several rings of small spines used for anchoring into the host's tissue. The neck is an unsegmented, poorly differentiated region immediately posterior to the scolex. It contains stem cells that are apparently responsible for giving rise to the series of proglottids. Here is a proglottid or joint of a tapeworm containing complete reproductive systems. Tapeworms are hermaphrodite meaning they contain both male and female organs. When these segments are relaxed, they take an unusual shape and resemble cucumber seeds. This is why Diplidium caninum is often referred to as the cucumber worm. Proglottids can become gravid or pregnant. The uterus grows and becomes packed with the egg. The adult tapeworms which can measure up to 60 centimeters in length and 3 millimeters in width, reside in the small intestine of the host where they attach by their scolex. There, they produce proglottids or segments which have two genital pores, hence the name double pored tapeworm. The proglottids mature, become gravid, detach from the tapeworm, and then migrate to the anus or are passed in the feces. The larval flea and just the egg packet from the local environment. The adult flea climbs onto the dog or cat to feed on blood. The dog or cat scratches and bites at the flea, and in doing so, consumes both the flea and the larva inside the adult flea. Cats chew an annoying flea while they are grooming themselves. The tapeworm larva is released and travels through the stomach to the gut. Diplidium caninum attaches itself to the intestinal lumen of its definitive host as an adult. Its hooked scolex is specialized to hold it in place in the intestines. Diplidium caninum and all cestodes lack digestive tract. Therefore, it feeds by absorption through its body covering. Because of this absor absorption method, of feeding, it is logical that all worms have evolved to locate themselves in the intestines of their host, 
where the partially digested food is of maximum benefit. The egg packets are able to pass through the stomach's acidic environment due to thick shells that are resistant to your body's reaction to them, as well as the hostile environment of the host's stomach. On reaching the gut, the tapeworm larva attaches itself by its head to the intestinal mucosa. Now the development from larva to sexually mature adult begins. Adult tapeworms consist of a head, which is used for attachment and a neck, followed by a chain of continuously forming segments called proglottids. The proglottids are shed through the small intestine into the feces. Each proglottid is an independent unit containing many hundreds of eggs. Mature tapeworm segments packed with eggs are shed individually and excreted with the feces. They are sometimes noticed as small, wriggling shapes resembling cucumber seeds or grains of rice. The feces of an infected dog or cat or even human may contain proglottids that are shed from the tapeworm, and these have a characteristic size and shape of rice. Diagnosis of this species depends on finding proglottids or egg packets in the feces. Once out in the environment, the shed proglottid segments continue to break apart and expel its fertilized, matured tapeworm eggs into the environment. As it does so, the eggs of the flea tapeworm are expelled from each proglottid segment in clustered groups that are termed packets. Each egg packet contains up to 30 individual tapeworm eggs called oncospheres, each of which contains an embryo called a he hexacan that has the potential to develop into an adult tapeworm at some point in the future. Once in the environment, the proglottids dry out and burst, releasing the tapeworm eggs. Flea larvae swallow the tapeworm eggs. While the flea larva develops into an adult flea, the tapeworm larva inside it hatches from the tapeworm egg and the cycle begins all over again. Most deworming medications, aside from heartworm medications, do not generally last very long in a treated animal system. When an all wormer is given to a pet, the drugs work rapidly, killing off the adult worm parasites before disappearing. The drugs do not hang around to protect the pet against subsequent worm infestations. This means that the, should the pet continue to eat infected fleas and lice in the days following the deworming treatment, they will most likely become rapidly reinfested with adult tapeworms. Adult flea tapeworms in dogs and cats can be eliminated from the animal's intestines using tapeworm-specific Antisystotal medications such as prosequantol or neclosamide. Neclosamide is a great alternative but may cause abdominal cramps, diarrhea, nausea, and vomiting in a small number of patients. Prosequantol is the antisystotal drug most commonly included in commercially available dog and cat all warmers. Although it is more expensive than neclosamide, it is far more effective. Hi, I'm Dr. Amy Bajer. I'm a veterinarian and we're going to be talking about tapeworms today in your dog. The treatment of choice that we use here is a, a drug called Prozequanto. It's a one-time treatment is typically curative. Sometimes we can diagnose it if we do see the little tapeworm segments or grains of rice uh, on your dog's rectum. Uh, and the good news is it's very treatable and curable and it is preventable as well. Remember, the best way to protect your pet against Depletium caninum is to constantly get your pet checked and dewormed. If you do this, it leads to a healthy pet, and a healthy pet leads to a happy owner.